Hi, everybody. This is Yvonne DeVito from the Purina Care blog for Purina Care Pet Insurance. And we have started a new series called the Interesting Claim Series of Podcasts with Dr. Bill Craig and Dr. Larry McDaniel. And we're going to talk about some claims that have come into Purina Care. Dr. Bill and Dr. Larry, take it away. Okay, thanks, Yvonne. This is Dr. Larry McDaniel, and some people that are listening to this podcast will recognize me. I write on the Purina Care blog about veterinary medicine, just on a variety of topics. And, and today we have our chief medical officer, Dr. Bill Craig, with us, and we're going to discuss an interesting claim or case that has come in to the uh, Purina Care headquarters. And the reason we're going over this is just to illustrate the reason why pet insurance makes sense and how it has helped out individuals with pets that have had serious problems. So, Bill, could you tell us a little bit about your background, first of all, and then uh, introduce us to this uh, this week's case? Sure. As Larry said, I am a veterinarian. was in private practice treating dogs and cats for 30 years here in San Antonio. And for the past year, I've been the uh, chief medical director for Purina Care. And in that role, I become involved in reviewing and processing claims. And it's interesting to see some of the unusual cases that come across my desk. And I thought it would be uh, of interest to uh, our readers to talk about one that we've seen today is uh, a little six-month-old female chihuahua named Wilma. And even at six months old, Wilma only weighs two pounds. Still a one-hander in terms of how much effort it takes to pick Wilma up. Wilma... Unfortunately, uh, and I don't know if uh, Wilma is a Flintstone and what kind of accommodation she has, but Wilma jumped off of her owner's bed and broke not one, but both of her front legs. So uh, that that, that two-pound impact hitting the floor was more than poor little Wilma's front legs could withstand. And she broke... Bill, did this this fracture happen in radius and ulna, or was it the humerus? The, 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 the lower part of the front leg between the elbow and the wrist, so the, the radius and ulna in both front legs. So, wow. Dr. Bill, I have to step in. Is this something that owners of small dogs should be worried about? Well, I think it's not very common. It's possible that Wilma might have had some not fully calcified bones yet because she's still a young, growing dog. And it may just be the uh, enthusiasm with which she jumped off the bed. Maybe they had one of those kind of antique beds that's up uh, a little higher that you have to have a little stool to get in bed. But whatever the situation, it was not a good day for Wilma. So tell us some more. Well, the primary care veterinarian, uh, Wilma's regular veterinarian, I think because of her size, her small size, and her immaturity, felt like that this case was going to be best treated by referring her to a board-certified veterinary surgeon. And the surgeon, you know, you've got enough of a challenge repairing one broken leg, but that adds to the difficulty when you've got two different limbs that are broken. In this particular case, and I don't know the exact location or nature of the fractures in the bone, but uh, one of the legs the surgeon elected to repair by putting a plate on the bone. And you can imagine how tiny the plate and the screws that have to go into the bone would be for a a two-pound chihuahua. I mean, you're you're thinking of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and those bones are bigger than poor Wilma's bones. So one of the legs they repaired by using a plate and orthopedic screws to, to attach the plate to the bone. The other leg they repaired by using what's referred to as an external fixator. This is a device in which the it's sort of a semi-surgical repair. There are no incisions made, and the, the fracture site itself is not exposed. But there are pins put into the bone that come out through the skin, and then a another pin or rod is clamped to those pins parallel to the leg to hold all the pieces in place. Bill, let me ask you this. Would part of the repair, the consideration for post-surgery and how this dog would bear weight after surgery? Well, certainly you can imagine that it's going to be difficult if you've got both front legs broken. Uh, It's going to be difficult for poor Wilma to get up and get around. It's going to require a lot of nursing care at home, uh, just carrying her outside to go to the bathroom, carrying her from her bed to her food bowl. It's going to take a while before she's able to walk again. 
And certainly these kind of repairs with surgical implants, such as the plate and uh, orthopedic screws on one leg and the external fixator on the other leg, those give immediate mechanical stability to the fracture and the patient can return to mobility much sooner than with something like a cast or a splint. So uh, I think that that may have been a consideration, just having that mechanical stability provided by the surgical device. So have the the external fixator been removed? Uh, I don't think so. This was was just a couple of weeks ago that the uh, surgery was done. And in this particular case, obviously those devices have to remain in place until the bone has healed and uh, is back to full strength. Now, in the case with the plate, that plate is is actually placed directly on the bone and then the muscle and skin are closed back over it. So the plate may well be left long term. The external fixator, since that device protrudes out through the skin, will be removed once the fracture has, has healed. And usually that's probably a minimum of four weeks, maybe six or eight weeks, depending on the follow-up evaluation of the fracture site with uh, radiographs. Now, did they do any testing for any type of metabolic bone disease or anything like that that might have precipitated these fractures? There was nothing uh, involved in the documents that were presented with this claim that certainly might be something that the primary care veterinarian might want to follow up on as part of the convalescent therapy. So, Bill, this I would imagine this was a rather expensive uh, process. Well, with the initial diagnostic radiographs, the uh, surgery at the referral center, and the follow-up radiographs post-surgically, this was about a $3,3200 claim. I think we paid about $2,800 to the pet owner to help significantly in in their expenses here. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, We should follow up on this one uh, to find out how uh, Wilma ends up once they get the external fixator off and, you know, five, six weeks from now, see how she's doing. Well, certainly in a case like this where there is ongoing uh, follow-up convalescent care, we'll kind of have a a follow-up history with Wilma. Great. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope Wilma pulls through and lives a normal life. I think so far, so good. Well, great, Bill. Well, we look forward to discussing... uh, other interesting cases next week. Uh, Thanks for your time, and keep those uh, interesting cases coming. Uh, Unfortunately, the pets of America, there's no end to the things that they, uh, kind of problems they get into, so we've always got interesting cases to talk about. (laughs) Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Bill. I want to thank both of you, and we will uh, hope everyone will tune in next week to our next session of Interesting Claims at the Prina Care blog. Thanks, Dr. Larry and Dr. Bill. Thank you.